The Bible says that we're, when we preach, we're to preach as an oracle of God. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to preach like an oracle of God because that's what I am. Amen. <laughs> so <laughs> you can say God is speaking to me today. He's going to speak to me today by the Holy Spirit through Pastor Matthew. <laughs> Are you ready to hear? Amen. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's pray. All right. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are good, that you love us, that you died for us. through the, You sent Jesus to die for, through, for us. And Lord, we thank you that the blood of Jesus paid the price that we could never pay. Yeah. And so, Lord, I thank you that I can stand here today with great authority because of the name of Jesus. Yeah. And Lord, I, I pray that you'd use your words to speak through me. And I thank you for, for breaking bondages, breaking uh, addictions, uh, breaking uh, every, every lie, every, everything that would exalt itself against the name of Jesus. Lord, we just come against those things right now in the name of Jesus. And we break the, those things. And we, we declare that we are going to be a people standing in the freedom of Christ. And we're going to be a people of liberty. Thank you, Lord, because we are a people of liberty. And we thank you, Lord, today for freeing the captives. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for freeing the captives. And Lord, I thank you for freeing our nation, too. For free our people, Lord. Yeah. Father God, I pray for those who have fallen into addictions, those who have fallen into vices, those who have fallen into things that are unspeakable. Lord, we just thank you for freeing them today yes. from, from those things because you want us to stand in the freedom. And Lord, I, I thank you that the blood of Jesus is so, it can pay everything, every single thing that we could ever do. We thank you for it today. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys, I just want you to know the blood of Jesus paid it. He paid it all. Amen. Yes, he did. Amen. amen. What happens if you, if you sin, the devil come and say, you belong to me. Because sin makes you de the devil's property. That's what happens. You sin, he says, guess what? You're my slave now, and I get to make you do what you... And you're like, wait. And you're like, Jesus! You need to cry out to Jesus. Yes. Amen? You slip into sin? Yeah. You need to cry out to Jesus, right. because you cannot free yourself. That's right. Yes. Amen? So you need to cry out to Jesus and just start declaring the blood of Jesus. Say that with me. The blood of Jesus cleanses me sanctifies me justifies me sets me apart praise the lord you guys the blood of jesus we i want to preach a message on blood and ghosts i want to preach a message on blood and ghosts you guys that sounds weird but what do we talk about at church we talk about blood and we talk about the holy ghost how relevant is blood and ghosts today I was at the store the other day uh, at Walmart checking out, and one of the magazines, it was all about how to connect with the dead. It was like a Time magazine. It was one of those, it wasn't Time, it was like, I forget what it was. But it was like, basically, you guys, blood and ghosts. People are trying to connect with the dead, but they're going to end up with demons. That's right. That's right. Okay? So we don't want anything to do... <laughs> with demons because jesus set us free amen. amen so we need to start talking about the blood of jesus the bible says we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb by the word of our testimony and we do not love our life unto the death so how do we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony and what is the testimony it's what the blood of jesus does for me yeah. When the, when the slave master comes and says, you sinned again, that means you're my property. <laughs> you say, I'm actually in the spirit now, buddy. <laughs> Romans 8. I'm in the spirit. I'm in the spirit. So guys, if you're born again, the battle's in the soul and the flesh. Because you've already won in the spirit. If you're, if you're Christ, you're sealed. You're his. Now, there's going to be a, the, the, the body and the mind. This is where the, 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 the challenge is, the battle is. You know, the Bible says that there's this, this law of sin that is working in our flesh. 
right? It's working in your flesh, whether you like it or not. I'm, 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 you know, <laughs> you're just like, God, what is wrong with this body? <laughs> There's sin in your body. It's a law of sin and the law of death. And you might, you might find yourself saying, Lord, I, you might say, I want to just go to heaven. I just want to be done with this thing. Well, you know what? The devil would be so happy. Because guess what? You have authority in the flesh. The devil doesn't have authority in the flesh. He doesn't. You guys, we, we are created in God's image, Genesis chapter 1. It says that, well, it says in Genesis that we are created in his image. I'm talking about Adam and Eve. Yes, they were real people. Yes, they were real people. Yes, they really sinned. Original sin was rebellion, disobedience to God. But I want you to know, you guys, one of the reasons why Satan hates us is because we have authority in the earth. Yes, right. Amen? Yes, that's right. <laughs> I'm preaching on blood and ghosts, you guys. <laughs> what the devil wants to do is he wants to gain access into the authority you have through your soul and body. And we say no. We say no through the blood of Jesus. We say no through the blood of Jesus. Amen? Say no. Say no with me. No. Through the blood of Jesus. Amen. So we need to start talking about the blood of Jesus again, guys. The blood of Jesus. Can you say the blood of Jesus? The blood of Jesus. <laughs> the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for your blood. That translates us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So say this with me. Say, my body is a temple for the Holy Ghost. My body is a temple for the Holy Ghost. Redeemed, Redeemed cleansed, cleansed, and sanctified, and sanctified by, the blood of Jesus. by the blood of Jesus. My members, my members the parts of my body, parts of my are, body instruments of are instruments of righteousness, yielded to God, yielded to God for, his service, for His service and for His glory. The devil has no place in me, no power over me, no unsettled claims against me. All has been settled by the blood of Jesus. I overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. And I love not my life unto the death. My body is for the Lord and the Lord is for my body. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Let's receive communion now. Amen. Amen. The ushers, to go ahead and pass the elements. You can never pay the price. You can never pay the price. Because your sin will always demand more. The only way to stop it is through the blood of Jesus. Amen. And 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord. It says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Therefore, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if you, anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. <laughs> you guys, this is the gospel we preach. You say, how could, how could Jesus bear the sin of the whole world? He's God. Yes. And only a perfect person could bear the sins of the whole world. <laughs> Jesus bore the sins of the whole world because he is God. He is God. Yes. Jesus, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Yes. 
Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk as just as, uh, just as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. And a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. He who says he is the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's just take a moment and get right with God today. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your body. We thank you for your blood. We thank you that it still has power and it always will have power. And Lord, right now we say that the blood of Jesus is, is enough for us. And we thank you that it, it covers all of our sin and wipes it away. And you said, Lord, as far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. So Lord, we thank you for cleansing us of all sin as we confess it today to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's receive the body and blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Your sins are forgiven. Thank you, Lord. Let's just say thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. The danger is to think that you're, you can be good enough to earn it, right? <laughs> you can't. You never will. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I have a message I want to preach today. So while we have some time. I'm going to call this um, the, the uh, concept of endurance has been in my heart lately. So I want to um, exhort you guys. The Bible says, like, to him who exhorts, he needs to exhort. <laughs> so I'm going to exhort you today. How many of you need some exhortation? Amen. How many need some encouragement? Yes. I need some encouragement. Yes. You need some encouragement. Yes. You know, one of the jobs of followers is to encourage the leader. Because they, you know, Joshua, they had to tell him, only be strong and of good courage. Yeah. You know, so I want you guys, I want to encourage you. You need to encourage your pastors. Yeah. 
He encouraged my dad, encouraged my mom, encouraged me, encouraged those in leadership like Katie, yes. you know, because the leaders, they need more courage than you do. <laughs> leadership needs courage. Yes. Kathy over here, back here, praise the Lord. Amen. Suffering for Jesus. Suffering for Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Be encouraged, Kathy. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Don't quit. Yes. So. I'm going to talk about finding your second wind or finding the second wind. <laughs> How many need some second wind? Amen. So uh, let this message encourage you today. <laughs> I, uh, I came across this quote. It's in the book Born to Run. And the guy says, Be beyond the very extreme of fatigue and distress, we may find amounts of ease and power we never dreamed ourselves to own. Sources of strength never taxed at all because we never pushed through the obstruction. Yeah, that's good. So there, there is, just in the human ability, there is a second wind. But we need to find the second wind of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I want to read this full quote, actually. It's by the psychologist William James. I don't know much about him, so I'm not endorsing him. I just found that this was a very... Uh, this quote was really relevant and it's very meaningful and I find there's lots of truth in it. So he says, the existence of reservoirs of energy that habitually are not tapped is most familiar to us in the phenomenon of second wind. Ordinarily, we stop when we meet the first effective layer, so to call it, of fatigue. Sometimes it's like when you wake up, <laughs> getting out of bed, right? The first layer, the first obstruction, getting out of bed, <laughs> right? We have then walked, played, or work enough. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not, trying not to do commentary on this when I give this uh, quote. Ordinarily, we stop when we meet the first effective layer, so to call it, of fatigue. We have then walked, played, or worked enough and desist. That amount of fatigue is an efficacious obstruction on this side of which our usual life is cast. But if an unusual necessity forces us to press onward, a surprising thing occurs. The fatigue gets, fatigue gets worse up to a certain critical point when gradually or suddenly it passes away and we are fresher than before. We have evidently tapped a level of new energy, masked until then by the fatigue obstacle usually obeyed. There may be layer after layer of this experience. A third and fourth wind may supervene. Mental activity shows the phenomenon as well as physical. In exceptional cases, we find... Beyond the very extremity of fatigue, distress, amounts of ease and power that we never dreamed ourselves to own, sources of strength habitually not taxed at all, because habitually we never pushed through the obstruction, never passed those cr early critical points. An example I have just come to mind is just, you know, if you worked all day and you get home and you're tired and complaining or whatever, and then all of a sudden like an emergency happens, or, you know, a family member needs help, suddenly you got to go, you know, you're not as worried about being tired anymore because you got to take care of that, right? Yeah. So all of a sudden, well, you thought you were totally beat, you didn't have anything else, then you're actually finding yourself the strength that you needed. So there's a second win. So turn to 1 Corinthians 9. And you know, the preacher always preaches to himself and you guys get to hear <laughs> hopefully right the preacher should be preaching to himself first corinthians 9 24 says do you not know that those who run in a race all run but one receives the prize run in such a way that you may obtain it and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a perishable crown but we for an imperishable crown therefore i run thus not with uncertainty Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. So the Christian life is a, it's a race, you guys. We are in a race, and we should run it in a way to win. Yeah, that's right. And so I was thinking part of this how to win is understanding that there is a second wind. Yeah. That gives you an edge. When you're totally tired, everybody's around you is like exhausted spiritually, right? We keep hearing these words of 
it's not getting easier, right? I remember 2020 was brutal, then I think Josh gave a prophetic word. It's going to get harder. Praise the Lord. What are we hearing now? We're hearing about recession, uh, inflationary recession. We're hearing this, right? Not only do we have a completely corrupt government that wants to take your liberties from you and have stolen the elections, but they want to take our cars away from us too. <laughs> so we keep hearing this. It's not going to get easier, guys. It's going to get harder. Um, but we're up for the task because the Lord is dwelling in us. Amen. Um, I shared a message in the healing room this past week on endurance. And one of the words I, I learned um, from Rick Renner in his book, uh, Living in the Combat Zone. You guys, we are, that would describe us. Yeah, that's right. We are living in the combat zone. Yes. <laughs> and that's actually where a warrior thrives. Yes. Is not in Camp Cupcake. That's what Josh said the Marines called leather, uh, what they call it, uh, Camp Leatherneck in Afghanistan. Camp Cupcake. We got these other guys, they're like, you know, in the boonies doing the real work. And I'm not, if you were in Camp Leatherneck, that's what my brother said, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but we are in the combat zone. We're in the combat zone. And so, but he's talking about the, the Roman soldier. And he said the best kind of soldier was not the city boy. The best kind of soldier they wanted in the Roman army was the, the country boys. The men that had grown up as farmers and who had to wake up early and take care of the animals and you uh, suffer through cro a crop failure and drought and they had to, you know, farm the land and, and you know, crack a dawn. And so the word that he used was um, the people who had been inured to difficulty. And so I didn't know what the word inure means, but it basically made, it means to make someone accustomed to, accustomed to something unpleasant. Yeah. And so I think what, one of the things the Lord is doing right now for his church, guys, is he's inuring us to difficulty. That's right. yes, <laughs> and it's like, here's a little bit. Here's a little bit more. Oh, here's a little bit more. <laughs> oh, because the Lord is gracious, even in all the difficulty, right? He doesn't give you more you can handle. Even the big picture stuff. But God is causing his, uh, the American church, the Western church, I think he's inuring us to difficulty. Amen. So guys, if you're wondering why life is difficult, if you're wondering why things are being permitted into your life, perhaps, the Lord is allowing us to be inured to difficulty. Because God wants our, the church to be a warring church. In the spirit realm. Primarily. <laughs> In the spirit realm. So God is doing that. And that's what endurance is all about. How do you endure? Does anybody know how you endure? You endure, you endure by enduring. <laughs> now let me ask, let me ask, pose a question. If you are an endurance runner, if you saw, a, you're running, you're maybe you're in your fifth, sixth, seventh, tenth mile, whatever, and you see this nice little park bench, and you get tempted to sit down. So you're an endurance runner. The moment you sit down, what does that make you? Yeah, a quitter, spectator. You're a sitter now. You're not enduring, right? You're not a runner anymore. <laughs> so the only way to endure is by running. Think about it. When you stop running, you're not enduring anymore. Right? So an endure, we endure by running, not by sitting, not by quitting, not by slowing down. We endure by continuing. And um, that's, the, that's the Christian life. It's, it's an endurance sport. Uh, Hebrews, let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. You know, I, you know sometimes I think we don't want to hear this, but this is truth, right? Yes. Sure. How you endure is by continuing. That's right. Yes. I had this idea coming out of college that I would never have to take another test again. <laughs> That was like the dumbest thought ever. <laughs> and gradually I started to realize, guys, that life is a test. <laughs> so if you don't want to take any more tests, life is a test. So you might as well get used to taking tests. And I think the Christian life is, I don't know why God does this, but usually you find yourself in a test that you didn't ask for and you didn't know about until like you're halfway through. And you're like, oh, that's what's happening. <laughs> and that's why, you guys, I'll just challenge you from my own personal experience. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You have to pray in the Holy Spirit because you can't perceive what's happening unless you do that. 
we have to pray, Ephesians 1, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, that we would see yes. what's going on in the spirit realm. Yes. And, then, and then the Lord gives us that, that rest in the enduring. So Hebrews chapter 10, 35. It says, therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of what? Endurance. Endurance. So that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. So endurance, I, wanna, I want you guys to think about endurance. The word in Greek is hupomone. And it means constancy, perseverance, continuance, bearing up, steadfastness, holding out, patient endurance. <laughs> what part of quitting is in that word? It's not. I love what Brother Jerry says. Quit is not an option. So the only option is to continue. Right? The only option is to press forward. It describes the capacity, the word endurance, to continue to bear up under difficult circumstances. Yes. Not with a passive complacency, but with a hopeful fortitude that actively resists weariness and defeat. So we're to, we're to con conduct ourselves with a hopeful for fortitude that actively resists weariness and defeat. Amen. What is one of the, the major parts of the armor, guys, of God that we have to keep on? Well, that's kind of an open question. But what I want you to say <laughs> is the helmet of hope. Yes. The helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. The helmet of hope. you got to keep your hopes up. Yes. Yes. You guys, when you're in the battle, yes. this is not about wishful thinking. This is, i got to keep my mind positive, yes. and i got to stay hopeful, because otherwise it's going to go the other way. Yeah. And I have to stay strong in this battle. You know, I need Michael strong. I need Brenda strong. I need Mike strong. I need Aaron strong. I need you guys to stay hopeful because I need some hope, right? right? <laughs> so in the spiritual war, if you're fighting with, you know, together, we got to guard our minds. We got to keep ourselves hopeful and we got to keep ourselves strong so that we can help each other stay hopeful. Amen. So that's so important to, to endure hopeful fortitude that actively resists weariness and defeat. Amen. We need to actively resist yes. weariness Amen. and defeat. Amen. Amen. One of the, the things that the devil does, I think it says in the book of Daniel, is that he, the Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist, will wear down the saints. His objective is to wear you down. Amen. How do we not get worn down? By actively, energetically right. resisting. Yeah. Amen. We, we, get our, we get our fire by resistance. <laughs> we, get our, we, get, we get fired up by resisting in prayer, resisting in praise, resisting in evangelism. Right? This is how resisting in confession and proclamation, resisting in, you know, confessing the memory verses that you have. That's how, that's how we resist. Amen. That's how we resist these spiritual things. Amen? Right. You know, guys, the Bible says in Ephesians 6, we do not wrestle with flesh and blood. Right. We do not wrestle with flesh and blood. You guys, we have to understand, you are not wrestling just with people. That's You're right. wrestling with flesh, right. with principalities, powers, rulers of darkness and heavenly yes. places. And the only way to do that is spiritually, right? The only way to resist spiritual problems is spiritually. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God yes. through the pulling down of strongholds yes. and every vain thing which exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Right. So we resist by endurance. All right. Somebody said to me the other day, it was really powerful. You have to decide that you're not going to quit before you begin. Yes. Yes. So that was like, oh, okay, guys, mm -hmm. because in the storm, what, is, what was one of the prophetic words today? about the boat, the storm. You guys, we are in a storm. Yeah. I think we just need to start getting, we need to live in the storm. <laughs> He's like, hey guys, let's get used to living in the storm. Yes. What did the Lord say? He put us in the eye of the storm, yes. the eye of the storm. Let's just get used to it. And you know what? The only place of peace on the boat in the storm is where? Does anybody know? Dad would say this is an open book test. <laughs> it's the face of Christ. It's the only place of peace and faith because everybody else is freaking out. Yes, yes. 
Some guys are freaking out. Somebody's Johnny John is overboard. You know, <laughs> this guy's, you know, not feeling too well. And the only person that's at peace is Jesus, and he's yeah. taking a nap. Yeah. Right. So, so that's the only place you can look because you got the waves and the wind and the look at the face of Christ. Yes. But you have to decide that you're not going to quit before you begin. Yes. I am not going to quit. I remember reading. Um, Bear Grylls has an amazing story. He almost like drowned in like the North Atlantic or something crazy, you know, and he had to decide, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to steer this boat until we get to safety. So we have to say, you know what, Lord, this is the only way through is through. The only way over is through. I, there's no other way, guys. Jesus is the way. There's no other way. The, the cost is great. It is serious. We are in a fight for our lives, you guys. We ha it, it does matter. Yeah. Amen? It does. It does. So in the hour of difficulty, the temptation to stop running may be too strong if you haven't already decided ahead of time that you're not going to quit. That's right. So you must decide before that you start, I am not going to quit. Yes. Amen. All right. So there's another definition of endurance I want to share with you, and this is in Matthew chapter 24. Can you say with me, I'm not going to quit? I am not going to quit. And it's not enough to say you're not going to quit. You have to start not quitting. <laughs> because that's what endurance is about. Okay. Uh, I love this in, in the, the Spirit-Filled Life Bible in Matthew chapter 24. Jesus says, this is Matthew chapter 24 in verse 13. Well, Jesus, is, this is the, the biblical backbone of prophecy. And Jesus says in verse 12, And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Uh -huh. yes. And this is agape love. This is not carnal love. Yes. The, the love. You guys, this is something I want to preach on. God loves us with an eternal love. The, the world wants us to focus on a carnal, fleshy love. But That's God right. loves us beyond our body. That's right. Amen. God loves us with an eternal love. And that's the love that we are to love each other with is an eternal love. Yes. Amen? An eternal love. Amen. That, bego that goes beyond time. Yes. So Jesus says, But he who endures, say endure, endure. to the end shall be saved. So how, how, do, how are we saved? By endurance. By endurance. So I think it's accurate to say you are saved by enduring. You are saved through endurance. Yes. Yes. Through endurance, you will be saved. Amen. Mm -hmm. So there's the endurance of the saints, guys. Yeah. It's not enough for us to just believe in cheap grace. We have to That's right. endure. That's right. Amen? That's right. It's not America. We've, preached, we've gotten a revelation of grace, but we preach a very cheap grace. Yes. Right. We have to endure. Yes. That's right. That means get in church. Yes. That's right. If you're going to take a vacation, fine. I just did. But stay in church. Yes. Right. Stay in prayer. Yes. Stay in fellowship. Yes. Right. Amen? Amen? There's deceptions being released on this earth, guys. Yes. You'll get caught in it if you don't endure. Yes. Right. Amen? I want, I, when I get to the gates of heaven, I want St. Athanasius to say, attaboy. Of <laughs> course, we want to hear Jesus first, right? Well done. But St. Athanasius, he said, stood against the world. Amen? Amen. We, want to, we want to hear attaboy for Jesus and then a bunch of other people. Amen? Right. Attaboy. Attaboy. You endured. You, you held fast to what you believed. You held yeah. fast to what you knew. Amen. Amen? When things didn't go your way, when, yeah. you had, when you were, you know, tempted, suffering, whatever it is, discouraged, you continued. Amen? Amen? Amen. Yes. Endurance is not necessarily about having fun, guys. It's about enduring. And then the second wind will come. Amen? So that's what we want. So endurance, in this word wealth, it says to hold one's ground in conflict. How many of you are in conflict today? <laughs> to hold your ground in conflict. To bear up against adversity. Hold out under stress. Stand firm. Persevere under pressure. Wait calmly and courageously. It is not passive resignation to fate and mere patience, but the active energetic resistance to defeat that allows calm and brave endurance. Amen. 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 
the patience we find in the Bible is not about sitting at a bus stop. Yes. Mm. Amen? Yes. We, need to, we need to actively, energetically do something. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? So we're to endure. Actively, energetically resist defeat. Yes. And I see the picture of a wrestler. You got a 400-pound person on top of you. Well, let's make them a little bit smaller. <laughs> a 185-pound guy on top of you. You have to actively, energetically resist defeat. Yes. Right. Amen? So when we're in that spiritual pressure, that crushing, that pressure, that yes. suffering, yes. you have to resist. Yes. You have to keep moving. You have to keep believing. You have to yes. keep confessing. Yes. Amen? That's how we resist. One of the things that Paul said is, you know, he said, put on the full armor of God, pray always, praying in the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's one of the primary ways we wrestle is by praying in the Holy Spirit. Because yes. you don't know what you're up against. Yes. That'd probably scare you senseless if you did. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So how do we endure, guys? By endure. You haven't got it yet. How do you endure? By if you sit down, are you enduring? <laughs> You're enduring when you endure. There's no other way. Evangelist Lester Summerall said, uh, run with the vision. Yes. When you stop running, you're no longer running. Yeah. I want to share this uh, article. Run with, the so don't, don't grow weary. run with the vision so yeah. you don't grow weary. That's what he said. So when you grow, this is, this is it's counterintuitive, but it's real. Yeah. When you quit, you're no longer enduring. When you endure, you get new strength to run. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And the people who continue to run, yes. continue to run. There's this article I found by this guy named Jackson, Evan Jackson. It's in the Gleaner. It's really good. He said, run with the vision God has given you. And I want to share this simple story. He said, I used to be an avid runner, and I still enjoy running from time to time. One evening this summer, while my son was at baseball practice, I thought I would take advantage of an opportunity to run on the trail that winds around the baseball park. However, since I had just eaten and wasn't really dressed for heavy exercise, I decided to walk instead. As I walked, I encountered an acquaintance with his family, um, and we greeted one another. Later, as I came around the other side of the trail, we met again. This time he said, Evan, my wife and I were talking, aren't you a runner? Isn't that powerful? He said, I thought it was, inter it was interesting that even though he saw me walking, he still remembered me as a runner. Yes. How, he knew I was capable of much more than I was doing at the time. Wow. There's nothing wrong with walking. It's great exercise. But running takes it to the next level. I started thinking about the difference in running and walking, not just in physical sense, but in a spiritual one as well. The Bible has a lot to say about running. For instance, God spoke to the prophet Habakkuk and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Habakkuk 2.2. He didn't say write the vision that he may walk who reads it. <laughs> no, he, want, he wanted his people to run. You see, God has a vision for your life and he wants you to run with it. What does it mean to run with the vision God has given you? First of all, it means to set, see the picture that God sees for your life. Know the plans he has for you and then go after it with a full force. Giving everything you've got. It means to be committed to God's call, call with your whole heart, not half-heartedly. Yes. We should be like the Apostle Paul who proclaimed, I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Yes. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3, 12, 14. The picture he painted was one of a runner straining for the finish line, not someone coasting along the way. In another passage, Paul admonished young Timothy not to neglect the spiritual gifts that were in him. Meditate these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. 1 Timothy 4.15 Likewise, I encourage you to give yourself entirely to spiritual gifts that God has given you. Uh, and important works he has called you to. Don't just dabble in them, but throw yourself wholly into them. 1 Timothy 4.15 that's when you really make a difference. Stop dabbling. 
May, maybe the Lord is nudging you today with the same question I was asked on the walking trail. Aren't you a runner? <laughs> Isn't that such a good question? Aren't you a runner? You might be standing or walking with his call, but God is reminding you today to run with it. Run with that vision. You've all been to the stadium and seen the athletes race. Everyone runs, one wins. Run to win. And then he says, even in a pandemic full of struggles and restrictions, never forget that God has called you for this specific time in history. He'll help you to keep running if you look to him. Yes, let's always run to win. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That is a really powerful article. So aren't you runners? Yes. <laughs> you can turn to your neighbor and say, aren't you a runner? Don't you run? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That, that's going to just change somebody's life right there. Amen. Aren't you a runner? <laughs> How many of you guys have seen the movie Amazing Grace? Yes. Wow. Powerful story. I want to share a quick quote there. There's a scene where these two guys are running, like kind of a fun thing, barefoot, right? And they just run. And the prime minister and Wilberforce, who is, um, he, his whole life was given to abolishing slave trade. And so the prime minister says, why is it that you only feel the thorns in your feet when you stop running? And William Wilberforce says, is that some sort of heavy-handed metaphorical advice for me, Mr. Pitt? And he says, yes, I suppose it is. You must keep going. Keep going fast. Yes. That's right. <laughs> yes. Thank God he did. Thank God he did, yeah. Praise the Lord. So aren't you runners? Aren't you runners? How about this question? Aren't you Christians? Aren't you Christians? Aren't you Christians? Yes. yes. Don't you confess the Lord? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Amen. We can we confess the Lord. Yes. Yeah. I'll say it. Then why are you doing that? <laughs> right? Come on. If you're a Christian. That's right. Come on. Why are you watching that movie, right? Come on. Why are you why are you going to that restaurant? Come on. You know, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why aren't you standing on the promise of God? Yes. Why have you let it slip? Yes. Amen? Amen? Why aren't you reading your Bible anymore? Yes. Yep. Aren't you a Christian? <laughs> right. Come on. Aren't, why aren't you sharing your faith? Yes. Come on. Aren't, you, aren't you an evangelist? <laughs> That's right. why, aren't you, why aren't you praying? Aren't you an intercessor? Yes. Amen? Amen? Amen. I want to say, I'm not sure that I want to say this was the Holy Spirit that said this to me, but it was just a, a, something in my heart, like in my spirit, and it's that there is no glory in running from a battle. There is no glory in running from a battle. There is, no, I'll say it again, there is no glory in running from a battle. There's no glory in quitting. There is no glory. But there is great glory in standing your ground. There is great glory, even dying for a good cause. There's great glory. So I want to read Psalm 78, 8 through 11. And let this, as, as the days get challenging, and as we have to take more of a stand for Jesus, you guys, this building is salt. This building is salt. This building is salt. When you see all the people bowing to the God of the age, the, the rainbow LGBTQ plus flag, they're bowing to it. This building has prayer and the blood of Jesus. Amen. Right. Amen. We're just salt by being here. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Psalm 78, 8, it says, And may not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set its heart aright, and whose spirit was not faithful to God, the children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God. They refused to walk in his law and forgot his works and his wonders that he had shown them. So guys, you have the weapons of warfare. Yes. We can't just come to a battle and say, I don't want to do this. True. You know, I'd rather go home and watch TV. <laughs> You've been called to battle. We've been called to, yes. We've been called to run. So it's a shame to us when we have the weapons of warfare. Uh -huh. Every Christian has the same armor, the same weapons. We come to a battle and we say, Jesus, I'm too tired going home. <laughs> you can't leave the army, by the way. 
So we say, no, I'm going to persevere. Yes. And then it says, and they forgot his works and his wonders. So how we do this, guys, is we cannot forget what God has done in the past. We have to continue to remember what has God done in our lives, the difficulties brought us out of before. And then we say, I see this. I've done this before. I killed the bear. I killed the lion. This Goliath is going down. Right. Amen. Amen. And then 2 Samuel 23, 12 says of the warrior Shammah, he says, but he stationed himself in the middle of the field and defended it and yes. killed the Philistines. So the Lord right. brought about a great victory. Yes. He stationed himself. He stood his ground. He took yes. his stand. He said, I'm not budging. You could kill me. Right. Either you're going down or I'm going down, and it's not going to be me. Amen? Amen. That's active energetic resistance. That's where you right. draw the line in the sand and you say, I'm going to come after you. You're, you this is going to be settled today. That's right. Amen? That's right. You know, some of us guys, we get so comfortable with the sin we have, yeah. the addictions we have, the thought life that's unacceptable. We get, ex we get okay with it. Yeah. Right. We need to have it out with the devil. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Say, today, today. Yeah. This day, I will strike you down. Amen? Amen. And Proverbs 24, 10 says, If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So let's not faint in the day of adversity. Amen. So I would just exhort you, if you are being sorely tempted to quit now, now's not the time. Because we're on, we're on a verge of a national breakthrough. That's yes. right. And, and a national awakening, you guys. I want to be part of the great awakening. Amen. I don't want to have walked away from the beginning of it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And I want to say, guys, the things we're starting to see, I see these are waves of revival. We hear that we are in revival. We're going to start seeing waves of revival. Yes. Amen. The Mario Murillo thing happening. Different events throughout the area. We're going to start seeing waves. And these waves are going to bring people in to the Amen. kingdom. Amen. 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 So resist defeat. There's no glory in quitting. Just see how much further God can take you in his name. Amen. 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 And I want to say one of our great presidents once said, thinking about doing something is harder than actually doing it. <laughs> so let's stop thinking about running the race for Jesus and let's start running the race for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We have a few more minutes. Praise the Lord. So guys, aren't you runners? Aren't you runners? Amen. Shouldn't we be running? Amen. Amen. So actually, let's, let's not finish. Let's take a moment and just ask the Lord, is there a way, Lord, that I have not been running? Yeah. Let's just spend a moment and just say, Holy Spirit, is there, if I have not been running and if I haven't, why not? And help me start running right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just ask that right now, Holy Spirit, you would convict us if there's any way we have not been running the race. Perhaps there's something you've told us to do that we have not done. Lord, I also just pray for a grace for those who are running. I pray, Lord, that they would find that second wind. Lord, they might be beyond exhausted right now. They might be so tired they want to quit. They might have been tired and tired and exhausted multiple times, and they're just at the edge. But, Lord, I thank you right now by your Holy Spirit that there is a second wind that they're going to find. And I thank you for that, that power and that ease, Lord, and that joy, Lord. I pray for that, Lord, that begin to rise up in their spirit, man. And, Lord, that they would continue this race for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And, Lord, you said be strong and of good courage. So, Lord, we're going to be strong. We're going to be of good courage. Yes. Regardless of what we see the world doing, how crazy things are getting, we say we're going to be strong and of good courage. Amen. And we're going to hold our ground. And we're going to continue to proclaim the gospel. And we're going to see the lost saved. We're going to see hell plundered. Amen. We're going to see families come to Christ. We're going to see yes. demons cast out and he yes. people be healed of, of uh, terminal illnesses and chronic diseases. Yes. And Lord, we're going to see we're going to see people filled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to see people falling out in the Spirit again. Yes. We're going to see uh, the joy of the Holy Spirit replacing 
oppressive spirits Amen. and spirits of heaviness. We just say that this city is going to be known for the presence of God. Yes. And Lord, we thank you. Our houses are going to be known for joy yes. and peace Amen. And, and nothing else. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We just say every, every spirit that's been assigned to vex, to harass, to hinder, we just say your assignment is over Amen. in the name of Jesus. Every, every, every spirit that would try to pin us and keep us from wrestling or from running, yeah, in the name of Jesus, we, we just bind every spirit that would try to get us into a wrestle and keep us from running. Amen. We break the power of those spirits, and we say that we are free to run the race for Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We're to stand fast, therefore, in the liberty that Christ has set us free and not be enslaved again under the yoke of bondage. Thank you, Lord. And we give you all the glory today, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Are you guys exhorted? Amen. Okay. <laughs> Good. Let's, let's continue the race in such a way that we win. Amen. That's right. Praise the Lord. Well, let's have the musicians come up. We're going to receive tithes and offerings. So what I have on my heart to just share briefly about tithes and offerings. I'm not sure what chapter it is in the book of Acts, but do you guys remember the story of Jairus? Not Jairus. Ananias and Sapphira. I was, that was on my heart today. <laughs> it's like, you guys, let's, let's be diligent and let's be honest with the Holy Spirit. Yep. Okay. The Bible says bring the full tithe in the storehouse. Yes. So let's make sure that we're bringing the full tithe into the storehouse. Yes, and promptly. Yes. Amen. That's Amen. I'm preaching myself here. Yeah. The whole tithe and promptly. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit knows everything. Yes. He knows it all. Yes. So let's make sure we're telling the Lord the whole truth. Yes. <laughs> the whole truth about what you're doing with your yes. money. Because he knows it anyway, right? Yes, let's be honest. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And uh, let's continue to believe that the Lord will supply all of our needs. When you're pumping up your gas tanks, let's continue to declare the Lord supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Lord, Father God, we just come now and we thank you, Lord, for the tithes and offerings that are coming into this house. Lord, I pray that money would not hold our hearts, Lord but that we, we would freely give you everything as we've given you our lives, our bodies. Lord, our money is part of our, our lives. So, Lord, we thank you that we do, not, um, we do not lay hold onto these things because they belong to you. And, uh, Lord, I thank you for uh, commanding the blessing. Lord, you said if we tithe, you would open the windows of heaven and pour out the, the, the storehouse brought so much blessing on us that we would not have room enough to receive it. And you said, Lord, you would rebuke the devourer yes. so that, that our vines would not cast its fruit. So, Lord, we thank you for rebuking the devourer yes. off of our families and our livelihoods yes. and everything that belongs to us yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's receive that. Yeah, we have connection cards, too, if you want to fill out a connection card. You can put that in the offering. And when we've received the offerings, you can stand. We're going to finish with a proclamation. And then also we're going to, there's going to be a short break. And then we're going to have the, uh, the meeting for VBS back here. So if you are interested in helping or you're part of the team, uh, VBS is really quickly after the service. All right, I want to declare this proclamation for God's protection. This is really important. Uh, Derek Prince, um, we have some of these if you want a copy, but you'll have to just follow after me since I don't have it written up there. So declare after me, and we're going to declare this in faith. Yeah. Amen, you guys. We are the assembled ecclesia. We are the, we are the governing body on the earth. So what we declare goes. <laughs> right? yeah, what we bind right. is bound. What we loose is loosed. 
God has given us authority. The word says where two or more are gathered, where two, two agree is touching anything, it'll be established. Yes. So I want you guys to agree with me yes. because there have been uh, attacks coming against us, physical attacks. Mm -hmm. I know attacks in the soul, in the emotions, and then, you know, so I want us to stand against them in Jesus' name. Amen? Mm -hmm. So say this after me. Say, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. No weapon. And every tongue which rises against us, in judgment we do condemn. This is the heritage as the servant of the Lord. And our righteousness is from the Lord. If there are those who have been speaking or praying against us, or seeking harm or evil to us, or who have rejected us, we forgive, we forgive them, and having forgiven them, forgiven we, them. Bless them in the name of the Lord. we bless them in the name of the Lord. Now we declare, O Lord, that you and you alone are our God, and beside you there is no other, is no other. A, just a just God and a Savior, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, the Father, the Son, and, the Spirit. and we worship you. Now we submit ourselves afresh to you in unreserved obedience. Having submitted to you, Lord, we do as your word directs. We resist the devil, all his pressures, all his attacks, his deceptions, every instrument or agent he would seek to use against us. We do not submit. We resist, we resist him, drive him from us, him from and exclude him from us in the name of Jesus. Specifically, we reject and repel oh. infirmity, infirmity, infection, infection pain, pain, inflammation, inflammation allergies, allergies, malignancies, malignancies viruses, 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 and every form of witchcraft. Form of witchcraft. Finally, Lord, we thank you that through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, we have passed out from under the curse and entered into the blessing of Abraham, who you blessed in all things. Exaltation, health, reproductiveness, prosperity, victory, and God's favor. Thank you, Lord. Let's just thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we receive your blessing. We thank you that it's upon us. And we thank you that we agree today. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Will you guys be blessed? And uh, thank you for keeping VBS in your prayers this week.